live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live Europe. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's exclusive coverage here in Barcelona, Spain of Cisco Live Europe 2019. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman and Dave Vellante here this week covering all the action in cloud data center, multi-cloud. Our next guest is Jim Frey, who's the Vice President of Strategic Alliances at Kentech Technologies. Um, groundbreaking report that came out of the Amazon reInvent conference, a lot of customers. Um, part of the multi-cloud discussion. Jim, great, great to see you, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, it's Fry, by the way. Fry, I'm sorry. Okay, no worries, <laughs> no worries. Uh, multi-cloud, your report uh, has some interesting data. Um, talk about the, the survey, the results, what is it telling us? Yeah, we've been uh, working hard at Kentic on, on extending our solution to start covering the cloud, multi-cloud, sort of hybrid environments. And so we were at the AWS reInvent show and we decided to take the opportunity to talk to some of the attendees and just sort of get their view of what some of the challenges are. So we talked to a little over 300 of them and we asked them a few questions, not a you know, rigorous thing, you're doing it on the show floor, right? Uh, but we found some really interesting things out of that. So the first thing is, is that it really is a multi-cloud world already, um, it, it, more so even than hybrid. So we had uh, nearly 60%, 58% of the people who, who we talked to had more than just one public cloud in play. They all, almost all had AWS, of course, because it was an AWS event, but not all of them, which is really interesting. Um, but uh, you know, they either had AWS plus Google or plus Azure or plus some other cloud more so than even hybrid. So we also asked, are you using AWS in conjunction with uh, your, your own private data center or a third party hosted colo center? Only 33% were doing that. So we were surprised. And the reason that, that that's really significant is monitoring and management of these environments is much more complex in a, well it's complex in a hybrid environment, it's even more complex in a multi-cloud environment. So it sounds like there's some real need for some help there. What are the challenges and uh, what are the, some of those complexities, what are the challenges in, in the monitoring? Well, so that was the next question. <laughs> What's the key challenge, you know? And, and usually, whenever you ask someone about the challenges, the number one answer is always, oh, security. That's my biggest concern. That did not turn out to be the case here. The biggest overriding concern across all the different sort of levels of people we talked to was actually cost management. And cost management is, it was a bit surprising. You know, but usually you hear security, 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 and then something else. This was cost management, either number one or number two, and number one for most of the constituencies. And in some of the subgroups, like uh, VP level, SVP level, architect level, it was overwhelmingly the first choice. 40 and 50% of them are saying, yeah, cost control is our big, biggest issue. Even ahead of other things like performance, like visibility, like actual you know, control of the environment. You know, so cost was really the biggest concern, yeah, and well, that's a big issue. Jim, something we, we've been tracking, especially at shows like this, at the Cisco show, is the challenges. I used to understand kind of the stuff that I had in my data center. Yeah. I could get my arms around it. I might not love the management tools that I have. I might complain about some of the costs, but it's all very well understand. It, it, it's bought mostly as a CapEx. Right, when you get to the public cloud, I totally understand what you're saying. Multi-cloud yeah. is now I've got all these different pieces, and how well do I have them defined? There's different skill sets between them, right. and when it comes to cost, right, the, the big unknown is, oh wait, am I getting surprised by what happens uh, in, in that environment and across all of them? I mean, uh, I've talked to plenty of companies that will dedicate an engineering resource just to manage cloud, or right. you know, I have many friends in the industry that are helping, you know, cost optimization is something that, you know, software consulting, there's huge business in that because yeah, yeah. We're, we're still early in, in, in this, so we're getting to those steady states. Um, we, we help us connect the dots. Where does Kentech play into this then? So you, you've so talked to all view, these customers. Thank yeah. you, our viewpoint is network, and we're trying to give a viewpoint of what's happening in this environment by watching the network. And that's always super valuable because it helps you localize where things are, you know, what activity is happening, and it helps you see you know, which workloads are talking to which workloads. Um, and that, that reveals uh, uh, sometimes things you don't expect. And this is where the cost control comes in. Because you know in the cloud environment, you have to pay for certain network traffic, especially between availability zones or when you're shipping out of the cloud back to your other, you know, your, your home environment. Um, and we have talked to a lot of customers who've said, hey, end of the month comes around, I get my bill and there's this big number there for data you know, transfer. I don't know what drove that I, and why am I being surprised time and time again by this? Well, the network viewpoint's really awesome for seeing that. And if you can do it with a monitoring system that's watching for that all the time, 
The good news is, is you can catch it, figure it out if it's real or not, need it or not, and fix it before 20 days later you get a big fat bill. What does fixing it mean? Does it mean like keeping it contained in the cloud or on-prem or managing could, what's moving around? Could be a combination of things. One of the things that we've seen uh, in some of our early deployments are uh, someone moved a workload uh, into a different availability zone. Well, there was an application dependency they didn't recognize. And you know, that workload was talking to you know, a home data center or the, another availability zone and creating traffic across there and just running up the meter on the, on the network costs. So if you can see that, and it becomes very obvious if you watch the, the traffic patterns, you can at least have someone go say, hmm, okay, that's a surprise. I had a big rise in my zone to zone traffic or my you know, cloud to, to home traffic. Uh, let's just take a look at who's driving that and whether or not it's something that should be or shouldn't be. One of the interesting trends we've been watching, obviously, with cloud and hybrid cloud is kind of the consumption and deployments of cloud. And hybrid's interesting because hybrid's about cloud operations on premise, which yeah. has been slowest to deploy. Uh, Wikibon's done a lot of research on private cloud and why that's happening. But it seems that cloud sprawl on the public side has been there. So yeah, got some Amazon, yeah. easy to stand up. Got some Azure and now Google. So it's probably easier to get stuff in the clouds and then now they got to repurpose on premise to kind of have the seamless cloud native environment, hence Cisco's announcements, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So as yeah. that's happened, what have you guys learned and seen in terms of the customer behavior? They wake up, obviously the bills are higher, so <laughs> it makes sense that multi-cloud yep. is higher than on hybrid, and the cost uh, containment is a concern. How did they get there? What are you seeing, and what's the psychology of the customer? Just share some insight into the, the customer behavior. Well. <laughs> is it, oh shoot, I got to unwind this? Do I double down? What's going right. on? I, I, I think, it really depends a lot on you know, what the projects are and what the objectives are and what the skill set is. Um, but one of the things that we found in this survey is that that network viewpoint that helps you understand what's really happening in the production environment is often being underutilized or underappreciated in the cloud environments, in the cloud uh, you know, uh, uh, deployments and cloud infrastructure. So one of the things we asked about was how many uh, of you, you folks at this, this uh, event are actually taking advantage of, for instance, VPC flow logs, which can tell you exactly what's happening within AWS and between availability zones. Um, and it was surprising. They've been around, VPC flow logs have been around for years as a technology and as an additional service available, but only about a third of the respondents were actually using them. So they weren't taking advantage of this important insight and viewpoint telemetry set. About a third kind of knew about them but wasn't using them yet, and then another third didn't even know what they were. Yeah. So I think there's still some uh, maturity happening, some maturation happening yeah. in terms of understanding what can I do about this? How can I get ahead of this? What's at my disposal? Yeah. So part of the challenge, of course, then is I've got that piece covered, but as you said now, how do I cover my home, you know, home front? And where do I find, uh, you know, some sort of tools that can be put these things together so I can see it all as one. And that's where you guys fit in. That's where we fit in. So yeah. let, me get, let me get some uh, um, anecdotes from you. One, it's clear that there's a pain point. Take the aspirin, <laughs> understand what's going on, contain yeah. the bills. Yep. Is, give a scenario of what they're doing to contain that. You've mentioned a few of them, but also give an example of where they're using the data to be proactive. So there's the vitamin side of it. So it's vitamin, aspirin, whatever metaphor. <laughs> so you know, I got to contain my costs, I get that. How are, how are people using the, the data to be more proactive in either architecting or deploying? So I think the, the I don't know that anyone's being proactive yet. <laughs> that is certainly the promise and the opportunity. Um, most organizations are simply want to be more aware of what happened or more effectively reactive, and you start there. And once you start to realize, hey, I can do this, then you can start turning towards being more proactive. So for instance, our solution was built to allow you to trigger corrective actions back to the environment. Um, we don't take the actions, but we can trigger the systems that would change configurations or change policy and inform those systems of you know, what's happening and what sort of parameters can we recognize that indicate an issue. Uh, so we, we believe that, in especially watching uh, the change in patterns of activity, noticing the anomalies, Anomaly detection is oftentimes used around security use cases, and we do that, but also it should be applied to operational use cases. When does a new workload pop up or a new you know, s volume of traffic show up that I didn't expect? And if it's something I, I recognize happens on a regular basis and I know the answer, let's automate the corrective response. So that's kind of our, our theory of provide you the understanding of what's happening, then with the tools to trigger an automated corrective action. 
All right. So, Jim, we're talking a lot about multi-cloud this week yep. uh, with Cisco. Uh, of course, you know, Cisco dominant in the networking space, uh, yep. really feeling out where they live in multi-cloud, uh, how networking plays across all of them. What, what, what's the relationship between Kentec and, uh, and, and Cisco? How, how does that work? Thanks, so we're a member of the CSPP program. We're a, a, a partner. Um, we, uh, we joined because we manage a lot of Cisco gear. <laughs> <laughs> so, a lot of our customers have uh, Cisco, a lot of our use cases uh, historically have been at the edge of the network, in particular uh, the uh, service providers. Um, so those that, that are delivering internet services are using the internet to reach their customers in some way. So what's really different about us is we do uh, a really uh, deep and detailed uh, approach of integrating a path, BGP path data and BGP route data and correlating that with the traffic as well with other enhancements to, and augmentations to the data that give business and service context to the network traffic. Makes it more actionable. Yeah, so, and what, what are you doing in like the container space? You mentioned edge computing. Uh, it's got some interesting use cases. Maybe explain a little bit where, so where you play there. So when I say edge, I'm talking about internet edge, okay. not edge computing, although we're fascinated by what edge computing represents and the new challenges that's going to bring. Now when it comes to containers, actually we're very fascinated in working in that area too because uh, John, as you mentioned, moving and implementation of new cloud workloads is cloud native, using Kubernetes, using things like Istio. Uh, you know, that changes the environment once again. So we've actually uh, built a connector into Kubernetes so that we can use that to pull service information. You know, in terms of what workloads, what containers are out there, what are they doing, what's their purpose. So when we show you an activity map of uh, you know site-to-site -site communications, we can say here are the actual you know, the services that are being, that are participating in this activity. Istio is another place we're really interested in to look at the service mesh, you know, that's being set up to run and operate communications between containers. Because that's a new sort of virtual cloud network. It's a way that these containers are, are communicating. And again, the more you understand about the communication patterns, the better you can recognize problems, the better you can balance and plan, the better you really get a handle on what's really happening. Jim, I want to get your thoughts since uh, you brought up uh, inter edge of the internet. Um, Multi-cloud and hybrid cloud as data moves around certainly brings up the question of which routes the packets are moving around. Yep. Um, there's always been debates about SLAs around you know, direct connections versus go through the internet. Is China looking at it? So there's a security kind of concern. Yep. What's the trend that you're seeing with respect to say either direct connects, because if I'm a company and I have multiple clouds, yep. I have the connections in there, I'm concerned about latency, certainly cost. <laughs> you yeah. mean, you yeah. know, whether it's cat videos or whatever, or applications talking to you, it still costs money. Yep. So latency is important. So each cloud has its own kind of latency issues. <laughs> what have Indeed. you seen? <laughs> well, getting to the cloud and then within the cloud. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's complicated. So this is a new dynamic, but it's a similar concept. Is there standard latencies? Is it getting better? What's the trend look like? That's a great question, and I honestly don't have a good answer for you, but I recognize and, and agree that those are common concerns that we hear, and the best thing that, that at least for what Kentic is doing, uh, is to provide the means to measure and understand that. So you can compare what's working, you can you know, document and baseline your different options and your different paths, and recognize when there's a real problem occurring when you start to see licensees spike to any particular cloud service or location or zone, you know, so that you can try to get on top of it. And so it's a classic case do. of evolution, get it instrumented, get yeah. the providers get better at what their service is, that's a, out of, really out of your hands. Yeah. It's not yeah. really. Yeah. Okay, so um, getting back to the survey to kind of wrap things up. Um, interesting, it's at Amazon, the biggest cloud show. Azure pops up on the list as, as pretty high. Sure does. Makes sense, Microsoft's got great performance. I mean, Azure's kind of like, they move a lot of stuff into Azure, pre-existing Microsoft stuff, plus they're investing. What's the bottom line summary as you kind of, you know, the aroma of the report. What is it, what's coming out of the report? What's the key insights um, uh, that you can glean out of so this? So I think it, it indicates uh, a normal pattern of adoption and sort of, we're growing into this marketplace. It's evolving as we go. You know, we saw s big early adoption happening in um, like lift and shift approaches to just move stuff into the cloud. Throw it in the cloud, it's going to be cheaper. It doesn't turn out to be cheaper. <laughs> it can be. Uh, then you've got another you know, or set of organizations that are born in the cloud, right? And they've started out from, their, uh, from the beginning. But so those two early approaches are now merging into how do we really use this as a true strategic approach to IT? Um, what are the real world complexities we're going to deal with? 
and how are we going to deal with those? It's really no different from the way that technology has evolved within the traditional data centers and why the way virtualization came in and changed the way we built and architected data centers. It's awesome, it's great, it saves you money in one area, but then it created huge blind spots because you couldn't tell what was going on in those virtualization layers. So we had to adapt our operational monitoring and operational practices to accommodate the new technology. I think we're going through the same thing now with the cloud. People are recognizing they don't necessarily want to be beholden to a single cloud provider. They want alternatives, they want cost, you know, competitiveness, um, they want redundancy. Yeah. Uh, and so multi-cloud, I think, is becoming more and more real, in part because people don't want to put all of their eggs in that one basket. And cost certainly looks good on paper at the beginning. Yeah. But then, as you said, there's <laughs> some side effects. It's a system, so there's consequences to the system yes, when absolutely. you start growing or whatever. And that's where people just have to work it better, right? That's pretty much the operational. I mean, let's, let's apply the same rigor that we used to apply to traditional data center environments and let's start embracing the cloud, right? So, Jim, you talked about the multi-cloud bit. Why don't you put a fine point on it? There's a reason why you jump from being an analyst into the vendor world. <laughs> Some people on the outside will be like, well, you know, cloud's been going on for 10 years. Seems we understand where this is going. But tell us why, you know, now is so important for this multi-cloud environment and the, the opportunity that you see at Kentic sure, well, in for this Kentic ecosystem. In, for Kentic in particular, what we're starting to hear very loud and clear amongst what our, our traditional um, an initial uh, base of, of customers was facilities-based uh, service providers and digital enterprises that managed big routed networks and needed to understand and can better control their relationship with, with the internet and delivery across the internet. They're coming to us and saying, hey look, we're splitting, we're adding cloud workloads. So we're moving our content that we're serving up into the cloud. You know, more and more of our systems are moving to the cloud and we rely on you for this visibility in our production environment, we need you to add this. So we saw a demand from our customers to, to, to you know, accommodate this and in parallel, we're just really inspired by this next generation of cloud native uh, application development it seems to be starting to reach that point where it's becoming reality and it's becoming mature and it's becoming a, a reliable approach to, uh, to IT that now's the time to really get serious about bringing these other best practices from the traditional world and applying right. them there. And the survey data is great, it proves multi-cloud and hybrid all here. Costs are, can run out of control. You got to work, you got to operationalize cloud yeah. in the same rigor, I love that. Great insight, Jim, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Sure. Live CUBE coverage here in Barcelona for Cisco Live Europe 2019, it's theCUBE. Day three of three days of coverage. We'll be back with more after this short break. <laughs>